This is the second part of the presentation of Chapter 5 of Awake Bride. In this study, the color coding is as follows. Brown for Tribulation, Green for Resurrection, Rapture, Second Coming of Christ, Blue for Christ's Judgment and Rewards, Light Purple for Millennium, Red for the Second Resurrection when the Wicked are cast into the Lake of Fire. The focus will be on Jesus and Paul's teaching on the resurrection and rapture, which occur in that order in the twinkling of an eye. Matthew 24 And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the world? For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Matthew 24, 30-31 And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Acts 1, 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why standing you gazing up unto heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Acts 3, 19-21 Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached to you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Times of refreshing have been compared to revivals, an apsuko literally means up breath and can mean a restoration of the weary through a cool breeze, but I think Peter is referring to the resurrection and rapture when Christ returns. According to Peter, Jesus must remain in heaven until the restitution of all things, until Christ receives the earth back as his kingdom. God gave the earth to Adam and Eve, and they were tricked into giving their authority over it to Satan. Christ bought it back, becoming a curse for us in order to break the curse, and Jesus is coming to redeem the earth and us. Philippians 3, 10-11 and 20-21 That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. For our conversation is in heaven, from where also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like to his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Colossians 3, 3-4 For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. We are waiting for Jesus to return from heaven, and when he appears, we shall appear with him in glory, and Christ shall subdue all things to himself. 1 Timothy 6, 13-16 I give you charge in the sight of God, who vivifies all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that you keep his commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, 
who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach to, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Second Timothy 4 I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. From now on there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. We are to faithfully obey God until the day Jesus appears and rewards the righteous and judges the wicked and begins his kingdom. This judgment is in addition to the great white throne judgment at the end of Christ's millennial reign. 2 Corinthians 5, 1-11 For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed on with our house which is from heaven. If so be that, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed on that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has worked us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given to us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Why we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in this body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest to God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Paul refers to our immortal body as a new building and new clothing. In other letters, Paul uses the analogies of our death and resurrection in Christ as being buried with him in baptism and raised up, also of being buried like a seed planted in the ground and sprouting up as a mature plant. This portrays some of our thinking of the resurrection, bodiless spirits who are reunited with their bodies from the ground at Christ's coming. But those who have died in Christ already have been clothed with resurrection bodies in heaven and are not naked and will come with Jesus when he returns. These are the aspects of believers who have died. They have received eternal life by faith in Christ Jesus. The life of their physical body has ceased. Their soul and spirit are clothed with an immortal body. Rewards for faithfulness and good deeds and faithless works are burnt up. And resurrected people in heaven are like angels in that they do not marry. Putting together Christ's and Paul's teaching on resurrection, we have these basic aspects with which most Christians agree. It's when we talk about the relation of the rapture to the resurrection of the dead that sparks fly. Rapture is the term used for when living believers are caught up into the air to be with Jesus when he returns. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14-18 for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Why comfort one another with these words? To place the rapture before the resurrection is to twist what Paul clearly wrote to the Christians in Thessalonica. It was a direct word of the Lord. Those who teach a rapture occurring before the resurrection of the dead are doing so against the word of the Lord. Also note, Jesus brings those who have been resurrected with him, and the raptured meet them, and Jesus in the air.